Oh, yeah. All right, guys. So as the title said, nuclear drills and Texas nuclear war coming. Do I think that Texas is about to get hit by a nuclear bomb, missile? No, I don't. Uh, this is actually something that has happened before in the past. They've done nuclear drilling. But I'm seeing a lot more chatter across the board about nukes, tactical nukes, nukes uh, in Belarus. It makes you want to take a look at it, not to be fearful, but also adjust your preparedness level. Facts are, guys, we are in a major conflict. I know there's plenty of people out there that's going to say nukes are not real. That's hogwash. They are. Uh, when I was in the Air Force, I was munition systems. Okay, I dealt with conventional. Uh, when I was at Shepherd Air Force Base, they roomed me with a nuke troop. And then they realized that they screwed up because our security clearance were completely different. And they pulled me and put me with the ammo guys, <clears throat> which I was. I was ammo. So, yeah, I mean, they're not going to have specialists for something that's not real. Anyway, I digress. So when it comes to nuclear preparedness for your family, let's be straight up. If a nuke hits your city you're living in, odds are 99.999% you're not making that. All right? If it hits directly in. I know, depends on the yield, blah, 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 blah. All right? We don't know what is going to be the actual target. Now, there are plenty of maps, target things online because of military bases. They could be possible targets, uh, D.C., Cheyenne Mountain, all, all this stuff. We as civilians don't actually know. We don't, all right? Uh, I do apologize if that light is doing some flashing weird stuff. It, it's an old light. So we don't know. What we can do is prepare for an event that is survivable if a nuke went off away from our city we have fallout coming our way things like that just because a nuclear explosion happened does not mean it's the end all be all end of the world people have survived look at hiroshima nagasaki people did survive all right how long do they survive well you know i don't know radiation let's talk about preparedness what you need to be doing for you and your family all right now the first question I get is sealed food, canned goods, dry goods, water, things like that. All right, let's go over some things. This is a can of ham. After a nuclear explosion, if this is in a blast radius, it is irradiated. Don't eat it. All right, if it's in a blast radius, you do not want to be going in and scavenging. Okay, think uh, Chernobyl, all right? Don't go for it. Now, if fallout radiation is falling out and it lands on this, the dust particles is radioactive. The food inside this is still fine. It did not take the blast of the gamma rays and things like that from a blast zone. So how do you safely eat this? You wash it, all right? You can wash it with soapy water wash it off when you open up this can your food is still good all right so that is dealing with nuclear fallout uh, same thing goes with freeze-dried the packaging same with mylar as long as it's just radioactive dust from fallout wash it off your food is good do not venture into a blast radius zone after nukes have dropped to scavenge food and water. That stuff is radioactive. Stay away from it. Now, when it comes to your water, contamination of water sources is a big threat, especially cities, right? As far as my knowledge goes, we don't have any radiological filtrations in our drinking water for city water. If you have a well and stuff like that, you might be safer because it's pretty, you know, your well's deep. Odds are that uh, nuclear debris gone down in it is very slim. 
but riverways, waterways, things like that, that dust particle is getting in there. It's contaminated. This is why we talk about storage of water. All right, this is a water brick. Okay, having water sealed, dust particles land on top, wash it off. The water inside this is clean, purified, ready for drinking. You just have to clean up the outside. Now, I want to talk about showers right fast because I've seen this many times and I've discussed this. You know, we talk about in the past having the suits and everything. We're going to show some of the suits too. Um, but when you got to change out of clothing and things like that, you know, they always say make sure you wash up. Do not ever use conditioner. The reason being is that conditioner binds the material and holds it into your hair follicles and skin. The radioactive material. You can use soap, shampoo, regular water. Do not use conditioner. Conditioner will bind that to your hair follicles, which is holding it onto your body. So, do not use conditioner when you're washing up. Now, during a nuclear event, guys, I know we don't have bunkers. So the best scenario that we can pretty much plan for is dealing with fallout. All right. Now, during this time, you're not going to get medical aid. Let's be honest, there is not going to be ambulance and hospitals open up. Let's just say there is a hospital open up. It's going to be overwhelmed with injured. Supplies will dwindle like that. You need to make sure you have medical kits in your home, in your bunker, whatever it is that you have, all right, your castle. If you need antibiotics, make sure you have those. Any life-sustaining medication, you need to be stocked up on, all right? This stuff is going to go the way of the dodo during a massive scale attack like that. And it doesn't matter if it's a small tactical nuke or a massive nuclear attack. You're not going to get any help. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some of these things that we carry on hand. We keep these in our vehicle and also our home. Uh, this is Iosat tablets. This is potassium iodide. And what it does is that it floods your thyroid so that you're not picking up a certain type of radioactive isotope in a blast radius, radiation, things like that. This is not 100% protecting you from nuclear fallout or radiation. This only blocks the thyroid from absorbing certain radioactive isotopes. So this here is only a level of protection against a certain isotope, not from everything. So I have seen the comments and I've seen people ask about this. If I get that, why do I need a suit? So that just stops the thyroid from absorbing that, which causes cancers and things like that in the thyroid. Your body is still susceptible to radiation. Your internal organs are still susceptible to radiation. If you inhale or ingest, let me go with ingest first. Radioactive particles, of course, by accident. Uh, pectin is actually one of the best remedies to deal with that. It binds the radioactive material and helps you pass it, whether it be from uh, defecation or urination. Okay, pectin is your best option on that if you ingest it. Inhaling is a different story. From my understanding, once you inhale the particles, it's in there. So this is where we're going to get into um, the masks, the suits, things like that. So let's say that you are traveling, either evacuating after radioactive has fallen, Seychelles or Seychelles. Uh, we got affiliated with them a while back. This is the only filter I found that actually filters out radiological debris, nuclear fallout this so this is why we keep these in our kits because no matter what we can still collect water and filter it out so the filters right here that's entirely up to you guys like I said you can store water and you'll be fine but trying to 
travel with a whole bunch of water uh, it's gonna be very difficult to do finding water might also be difficult just an idea as a prepper we try to think outside the box as much as possible moving on we do have some products here from mirror we are affiliated with mirror and a lot of these products we are affiliated with this is their hazmat suit all right this is to protect you when you are moving through nuclear fallout this is a chemical biological nuclear radiological suit full body suit all right the only thing this suit does not have is gloves and booties that are attached to it so you need to make sure you have the appropriate stuff for that having a good suit now for years i have stored tyvex tyvex is very thin in my opinion it's better than no protection it's cheaper than the heavy duty suits but it won't last long and it does not provide the same amount of protection in my opinion but then again having something is better than nothing in my opinion do i recommend better suits yes i do but when we first started out we started out with these tyvek suits we held on to them in case you know we come across somebody that needs something so we have a couple of these laying around i feel safer with the heavy mirror suit than i do this thin suit next up we have thick rubberized gloves these are parts of our suits these things here uh, the woven fabric on the inside heavy dip rubberized on the outside these things here are not very expensive these are not from mirror mirror does have a set of uh, chemical biological gloves uh, these were cheaper when I was doing my preparedness level all right and as far as I know they work very well so we had picked up these as well now it's entirely up to you but you do need to protect your hands very important now I have duct tape they actually make a suit sealing tape for your hazmat suits your nuke suits I don't know if duct tape breeze I don't think it does but I could be wrong if you want to do it correctly there should be a pop-up photo of the actual tape itself that you should be using for your suits I use duct tape the thing with duct tape is is when you go to remove it you can tear your suit this is also why we went with a heavy suit from Mira instead of just the Tyvek suits because I ripped Tyvek suits just doing video shoots and go to peel this duct tape off yeah didn't work out so good okay so now we're getting into respiratory this is a Mira filter chemical nuclear biological you name it this is your filter right here uh, they are not cheap um, but if you want quality there you go I do have some cheaper filters but now I purchased these filters a while back before there was ever threats of nuclear war before there was threats of the scandemic all that stuff so I actually got a whole bunch of these they're still chemical biological radiological uh, nuclear but I honestly feel safer with the mirror but these things are tested the same so it's up to you on what you do on your filter make sure you get the CB um, the chemical biological nuclear radiological make sure you get that all right you want to make sure you have filtration because if you don't you're gonna know these are Israelis I uh, bought these a while back now with filters anywhere from five to seven years shelf life remember that they're not cheap but I'd rather invest and make sure I have things and not need them next up guys we do have the mirror full-faced mask this thing is very nice we had gotten one of these a while back 
and we did a review on it should be a video pop up there for you love these so we went ahead and purchase more they're not cheap but if you want quality you're gonna pay for it so it does have the headrest and everything else as you guys can see I haven't shaved in a few days I need to shave now a trick you can do if you are caught off guard you are a man have a beard uh, you can take Vaseline lather up really really good put your mask on it should produce a seal okay this is why I don't like wearing a beard is because in case of an emergency I need to be able to seal up my face so I don't walk around Vaseline in my pocket so there we go um, we probably need to start putting a, a jar of Vaseline in the kit as well especially for the vehicle but um, yeah so this is the mask here it does have a water spigot straw right here uh, the reason being is because this particular mask actually comes with a canteen this is a sealed canteen you flip this over you got a rubberized seal up top you stick the straw down inside of it you can now drink water securely while still wearing your mask because so I'll be honest with you guys the tests and things I have done with this suit and mask on you get hot you get hot really quick and this is not a lot of water but this is the one that they actually sent you're gonna be drinking a lot of water it gets hot in those suits so that is the protection level I recommend preppers to be doing now I know there's gonna be things comments and the, there's already gonna be comments how dare you try to sell me I don't care I'm just showing you what we're doing here you don't have to buy anything from us we show you the products that see I was smart I'm a, I'm a prepper I've been prepping for years I decided to make a YouTube channel because some of these products I just did not have the means of acquiring yeah so became a prepping channel started working with affiliate programs and got better prepared this is one of the things I've always encouraged people because I see people all the time how dare you, you youtubers don't I work in the shipyard I don't just sit and do YouTube all right I work a full-time job I still do outdoor survival training all right I offer that and I do private classes now I run my own business I'm not just making money on YouTube but I utilize my brain which isn't very smart I know to make contacts with the preparedness affiliates you know Jace medical nuclear stuff from mirror um, for Patriots my medic these things are products that I was able to get hold of to better prepare my family I told people for years since we started doing this channel I've even done videos trying to show and teach people how to do YouTube I've actually helped many YouTube creators get started yeah I encourage you sit down start filming you can create a channel just like I have you can do whatever type of channel you want me I try to show you exactly what we do everything from exercise and working out getting your body in shape building your own tiny home work on vehicles outdoor survival try to show you what I do my knowledge I put on film for you so you can learn start your own channel up I see it all the time well I can't afford blah 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 you know what most of the time neither could I so I had to work multiple jobs YouTube's a full job working shipyards a full-time job turning wrenches under the table work full-time job running my survival classes full-time job well that's not really that's a part-time job man that does not get much sleep but because of that I'm able to prepare my family more and more I don't look for the well I can't afford that I never look at excuses that I, I don't like excuses there's no such thing there's always an option on survival you know this is why when I see people tap out of my class looking for an excuse oh it's just too hard oh my ankle oh the, if you're having to survive and you're screaming about oh my ankle sore 
brace it up, strap it down, keep moving. You, you're just going to stop in the middle of the woods and die? Or are you going to push your body? Same thing with preparedness. Are you just going to look for an excuse? Well, I can't do this. I can't do that. Or are you going to find a way to make it happen? Well, I can't do this. So here's an idea. Work with a group so you can actually find somebody in that group that can and also provide trade with something else with them. Become part of a community. You all work together and everything gets accomplished instead of, well, I can't. I can't never did anything. All right, guys. Keep on prepping. Get your families ready. Speak to you later.